When it comes to strawberries, troubleshooting begins before you ever even plant anything. Having prevention in mind when planning for a strawberry crop will greatly improve your chances of having a higher yield down the road and avoiding many of the common pests that are associated with strawberry plants. With these tips on the proper location, watering, and cultivation, you can really eliminate most of the threats that you're gonna have with a strawberry crop. But even if you take every single preventative measure in the book, you're always gonna have that possibility that pests are gonna find a way into your crop because everyone loves strawberries. Most important factor to keep in mind when you're choosing a location for your berries is the drainage of the soil. Strawberry plants don't do well in locations that tend to hold a lot of water, and that standing water will actually drastically increase your possibility of pathogens that get introduced to the crop later on. Another factor to consider is irrigation. While strawberries can do well in an open area, they will likely benefit from being grown under the cover of a tunnel, like a high tunnel or a caterpillar tunnel. By using bottom watering, like a soaker hose or some kind of a drip line, you can reduce the moisture that's left on the leaves, which is actually a major source of the diseases and issues. If you must water by sprinkler or hose, it's important to keep a close eye on the moisture levels of your plants and be sure to thin out any unnecessary foliage to ensure the proper airflow between plants and within your crop. This leads to the importance of cultivation in a strawberry crop. Weed control is essential for strawberry production. When we plant strawberry plugs, the roots are too shallow to compete for moisture and nutrients. And then the plants themselves are just short enough that they can't compete with the taller weeds for the sunlight. Additionally, weed pressure creates ideal conditions for the transfer of disease between plants by blocking the airflow and then trapping in moisture. We use a plastic cover over our beds, which is a practice that's known as plastic culture. In the past, we also used a landscape fabric in the walkways to reduce the weeds, but we're trying a simple leaf mulch this year. The mulch was applied during the winter months, and it seems to be effectively maintaining weed pressure in the walkways. By using a decomposable layer rather than a simple barrier for weed control, we're able to actually feed the soil in those walkways, which tend to be overlooked when you're considering the overall health of a garden. Let's talk about diseases. One of the most common ones that I have always come across is gray mold, and it's one that is very common among all strawberry growers. It's gonna appear as a powdery gray mold on the softened fruit and sometimes on the leaf tissues, and it will significantly reduce the viable berries if it's allowed to flourish. Proper airflow is critical to preventing the conditions that promote the mold growth, and caterpillar tunnels can actually offer a lot more protection by protecting the plants themselves from rainfall. Uh, but also physical removal of the diseased fruits should always be a habit. And it's important to wash your hands between handling a diseased and a healthy fruit. If you're maintaining a perennial bed, you wanna make sure to remove all of the dead debris from the plants before letting the crop overwinter. Also, if you need to fertilize your beds, you wanna stick with a late winter fertilization to avoid fertilizing in the spring as it actually promotes a lot of vigorous growth all at once that really holds in moisture. And the plants look really good, but it does produce those perfect conditions for the mold to take hold. So you're gonna to wanna to avoid that as well. The next three diseases are all ones that present through discoloration on the leaves themselves. And they can be prevented again by maintaining proper airflow and moisture levels. Additionally, if these particular pathogens have been a problem for you in the past, there are various strawberry plant varieties that are actually resistant to them. Keep watching to see what varieties we recommend. All right, let's go ahead and talk about those three fungal infections. First one is gonna be leaf spot, which is a fungal disease that begins in early spring or summer and can be easily spread by the splashing of raindrops on leaves. This fungus will appear as irregular purple colored spots with a grayish white center on the leaves, stems, and then eventually on runners. If left unchecked, the infection will begin to heavily reduce your flower buds. This also requires good air circulation between plants as well as sanitation of the beds by removing any overripe fruit, dead plant material, and heavily infected plants. The next one is called plant leaf scorch, and in the early stages, it actually looks very similar to the leaf spot. It first appears as numerous little purple dots or blotches on the upper surface of the leaves, which then end up coalescing into, until they start to cover the entire leaflet. Uh, leaf scorch also overwinters on dead leaf matter, so this is another reason to either remove any dead leaf material at the end of the growing season or even rotate your strawberry crops like we do. 
The third one here is leaf blight, which is another pathogen that first presents itself in spots on the leaves, although these spots may not be as well defined as the spot or scorch ones that we just talked about. These blotches will become little V-shaped lesions with a light brown inner part and then a reddish brown outer part. Eventually the entire leaflet will turn brown and in severe cases the blight may actually make it down to the stem and just kill off the whole plant. Once again, this fungus can overwinter in the old leaves and the spores are released by splashing rain in the spring. Removing dead leaf litter is important and protecting the plants from rain can help curb this spread. Next, I wanna talk about red steel root rot, which is actually a fungus that infects the actual roots of the plant. And it's the most destructive in soils that have a heavy clay content during cooler weather, which is what we have here. Uh, you'll notice that the plant itself will begin to wilt and there will be very few new roots. Uh, any remaining roots will start to take on a kind of a grayish color. Uh, but to positively identify the fungus, you're gonna have to actually look for a pink or red color in the ventral portion of the root, which you would have to cut open to see. Uh, and that part of the plant's called the steel, which is where it gets its name. If the plant doesn't completely die off in the spring, it will be stunted and it will produce very few runners. It's better to remove the infected plants once this root rot is suspected, as it won't probably produce viable berries, and it will likely start to pass on the pathogen through any surface water. Planting in a well-drained site is again the best way to avoid red steel root rot. Moving on to fruit anthracnose, which is a fungus that favors high temperatures accompanied by rainfall, again, uh, which unfortunately happens to be very typical of our early Arkansas summers. You'll notice round, sunken areas or tan or brown lesions on the fruits themselves. If present during dry conditions, these berries will actually become mummified and they'll turn black. The anthracnose spores can often overwinter as the other ones that we've been talking about. So if you're finding infected fruit on your crop during one year, you'll likely continue to find those infected crops the following year. In this case, it's best to rotate your strawberries each year. Let's move on to animal pests. The strawberry root weevil is a common one, and it's the larva that can actually cause serious damage to the plants as they burrow into the roots and the crowns of the plant. Damaged plants become stunted with a dark colored leaf bunch that's really closely bunched to the crown. You should remove the affected plants immediately and plow under old beds as soon as possible to prevent the future spread. Moving on to two-spotted spider mites and cyclamen mites. So these are mites that feed on the underside of the leaves and they can quickly become a serious issue if left unchecked. Often the mites will actually be arriving on plugs if you order from a nursery that happened to be infected. Uh, field strawberries are not usually affected, but if you're getting them from your plugs, you'll find them. With mite damage, the leaves will become stunted or crumpled, and the yield from infected plants will definitely suffer. Be sure to inspect your plants when receiving them from a nursery to ensure you're not introducing these mites into your garden. Here at Heifer Ranch, for the last couple of years, we've actually been getting our strawberry plugs from Cottle Strawberry Nursery out in North Carolina. So they, we find that the plants that they have are just really healthy, they're easy to transport, they always arrive very healthy and very vibrant, and we've had no problems with them in the past. Uh, the particular variety that we use is called Chandler, which is kind of a, a mid-season variety. It suits really well to our particular climate out here. Um, if you want some of the earlier varieties, they have several, and those can actually help if you want to avoid some of the pests that we've talked about. Uh, so perhaps like their Sweet Charlie is one of their earlier varieties or even a Merced. Um, so take a look at all of the strawberries. They've got a lot of different varieties and, and different ways of getting them as well. You could get plugs, you can get bare root. Just check out their website. It's, it's got a lot of information there. In the spring, strawberry bud weevils, also known as strawberry clippers, puncture the plant's flower buds uh, where they actually will lay their eggs. And this prevents the bud from opening and then will prevent it from becoming a berry in the future. So this will significantly reduce your yields. It's important to remove any infected buds and then spray with an insecticidal soap if you're finding a lot of those infections. Next, we have tarnished plant bugs, which appear in the early spring, like many of the others, but they can actually stick around until a heavy frost in the fall. Both the adults and the young nymphs feed on the flower buds and the fruits, resulting in deformed fruit that's generally unmarketable. For this one, weed management is key in reducing exposure to plant bugs. We found that earlier fruiting varieties escape this insect, but later varieties take the brunt of the damage. 
If you're having a severe issue with them, using a row cover during the early stages of the plant's development can actually be very helpful. So as the berries begin to ripen, adult sap beetles will be attracted to these ripe fruits and will start boring small holes, which aren't terrible, but they do introduce a rot into the fruit, which makes them totally not marketable. Make sure you always want to pick up all berries that are ripe, including overripe berries, and remove them from the bed because it does attract a lot of these sap beetles right into your crop. If you're having a lot of issues with these, you can create a little trap in a location far away from the strawberries using maybe a stale beer or decaying fruits as a bait, and then it just takes them away from your crop and sends them off into a different location. Additionally, if you do start to find more holes and they are deep into the fruits, uh, around the cap usually, this is also an indication of slugs. So slugs are proliferating in this damp weather and they like to hide in the dead leaf litter that plants will leave behind uh, during the day and then they come out at night. Uh, so removing that plant leaf litter is important, uh, but if you really need to get rid of them and trap them, you can actually just set out a board and then overnight uh, they'll come out and then at, during the day again, they'll just go under the board and you can actually just pick the board up and then remove them physically. Uh, moving on to the furrier friends. Uh, using physical barriers is the best way to keep critters like birds, deer, rabbits out of your strawberry patch. Um, using a bird or deer netting across the entrances to tunnels is kind of what we've been using. Um, you also wanna make sure you're maintaining a proper fence line. You can also use visual or audio devices to scare off the wildlife, such as like a wind chime or some kind of a reflective wind streamers. There's all kinds of options. You can look those up. Strawberries can be a finicky crop if not maintained properly, but with close observation and care, these plants can be a productive and delicious addition to your garden.